Oh, hello. What a fascinating surprise it is to see you here this morning. How are you doing? How's everybody doing? Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Let me start by saying I'm Sean Butler from the Spurs Talk Show. Over there is my co-anchor, co-pilot, Bugsy Malone. And we bring to you episode 63 of Tottenham Walks. And episode 63, guys, is a hell of a lot like episode three. Back in March, right over there, I was talking to you about stadium naming rights deals that were getting posited in the press at the time. 500 million pound deals for Amazon or Nike to sponsor our stadium. The long awaited stadium naming rights. It never came. It never came. When I was over there, you can check out the channel right here. But before you do that, if you don't mind, please hit the like button, the subscribe button, and elbow drop that notification bell so that you can be alerted the next time that we go live or the next time we drop content. So you're the first ones to come and say hi. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was over there, I was talking to you about how the finances of those sorts of things work. Manchester City was the, and is still currently, the highest stadium naming rights deal in the Premier League. The Etihad Stadium is what it's called, as you know, 18 million pound a year. The Etihad airline owners are the same people that own Manchester City. And so really they're just robbing Peter to pay Paul and it's just a way to circumvent FFP because the value of that deal far exceeds the utilization of it from Etihad's perspective. Although the idea that an airline would sponsor a stadium makes total sense because depending on what the stadium or the arena is used for, there's no point in local brands or just international, uh, just uh, like UK brands sponsoring because the reach goes out global. So you need global brands to take advantage of the exposure and the association to high level sports teams. Excuse me. In Europe, Real Madrid currently have the highest sponsorship deal for a stadium at 23 million euros a year. Other notables in weird parts of the world that you wouldn't think would have such high uh, sponsorship deals relative to the economy is Besiktas, I think, in Turkey, who have a 13 million euro a year deal with a telephone, a telecoms provider. And the biggest deal in the world is with the Staples Center, or what's used to be called the Staples Center in Los Angeles, that was signed in November 21 for $700 million, 20 year deal. $35 million a pop with Crypto.com. Now, the reason why Crypto.com went so big with the Staples Center is because of the frequency of the use and the utilization of it in terms of status. And that's key. Basketball is played more frequently than football over the course of a season. And that stadium being the size that it is, is used for tons and tons and tons of other things. It's used for expo expos and conferences and concerts. And the list goes on. But it's of a certain size where the frequency of use makes sense for smaller events than just ones that are kind of rarer but need massive stadiums like boxing, for example. For Tottenham Hotspur to try and get as much juice out of the squeeze of that lemon as possible, they need to find a corporation, find a brand that benefits from global exposure, that benefits from being aligned to a top level sports team, but that also uh, would want to have as many events held at the stadium as possible. And for Tottenham to maximise the amount of money that they can get, they need to improve the technology that currently is in place with regard to the retractable pitch. Now I'm gonna to come to that in just a second, 
but the the name that's been touted today is Google and that makes total sense right it's a global brand I think they're only banned in China and I don't think they're particularly used in Russia anymore but generally speaking in the English speaking world or in the Western world I should say not just English speaking Google is uh, you know one of the biggest brands out there makes sense but Tottenham at the moment only have 19 home games and then two NFL games a season I think that might be raising to three soon um, maybe even from this year and they also throw in you know two or three concerts maybe four concerts a year and if there's any boxing events so let's call it 24 maybe 27 less than 30 events right we'll call it we'll, we'll round numbers less than 30 events I think Daniel Levy from memory wanted 500 million pound for a 20 year lease a 20 year naming rights deal so 25 million pound a year that money would be used to pay down the stadium debt it would on some level go back into the football club and would help with you know transfer budgets or salaries staffing whatever right the costs of the football club but if Daniel Levy didn't know then he does know now that there is new technology that has recently come to light that enables the transfer of the pitches and the general stadium flooring to happen far quicker than it currently does so the last NFL game that was being played at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium was just yesterday and the next home game that can be played at Tottenham Hotspur or will be played at Tottenham Hotspur is on Wednesday against Frankfurt so that's 72 hours to get the stadium completely flipped mowed repainted you know and, and everything everything absolutely hunky-dory it takes 48 hours for the pitch to uh, to, to transition so there's very little time and very little space for any mistakes if there was some I don't know engineering issue with the the motors underneath uh, it took a few hours to fix etc Tottenham may struggle to get the stadium ready for the next fixture which will be Tottenham's uh, football team one second by implementing a multi-million pound upgrade that the time it would take to change that stadium flooring it would be halved 24 hours that would enable and allow for Tottenham Hotspur to hold literally dozens more events at the stadium if they wanted to if there was enough demand from concerts or you know fight matches MMA UFC boxing stuff whatever right and all of that additional money would come on Bugsy would pay for the multi-million pound upgrade in its first year so I can already imagine and envision because I've already seen content with people frustrated with just the idea of Tottenham using the stadium on non-match days for things other than Tottenham Hotspur and I'm making the point that it's supposed to be about football but those same people generally are people that are Levy out they don't like the fact that there's commercialization yet they also complain when Tottenham don't have a transfer budget that is big enough to compete to give Conte what they want they also complain about the price of tickets or the price of beer or the price of burgers in the stadium there's very little context or consideration to the requirements of revenue streams in order to try and compete with people who like in the example of Manchester City have shell corporations that are set up with no employees to circumvent accounting FFP processes and policies to in inject money into the club that comes from their own sources in order to buy the players that they buy 
Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain, Newcastle, Chelsea before, all of those teams were not self-sustainable from revenue streams that were generated through the football club. They were all either given money through loans or through indirect beneficiaries that would never stand up to any kind of high level scrutiny. Tottenham Hotspur don't have those resources and don't do it that way. For me, I don't understand people who have a problem with revenue streams coming into the club who then demand success without recognising or acknowledging what it takes to generate the revenues to be able to deliver or get even close to delivering success. I'm interested to see whether the Google Stadium deal happens. For me, I think it will be contingent on the multi-million pound upgrade of the technology so that Google would pay whatever fee that Daniel Levy wants and that can be justified by both parties as a win-win because of the increased frequency in which stadium events that are non-football related can be held. And that shouldn't be seen as a bad thing. As long as it doesn't disrupt Tottenham's football, then it shouldn't be seen as a bad thing. It should be seen as a wonderful thing as it will enable and increase the likelihood of delivering what everybody wants, which is success on the pitch. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to leave it right there. I will see you on the next one. Like, share and subscribe. And as always, guys, as always.